Hi, my name is Lowry Yankwich, and I'm going to be leading you through this tutorial today. I'm going to close off the video so that the slide is really clear. So if you're interested in learning how you can seal your quarry, you've come to the right place. This is a tutorial by the Legal Services Center of Harvard Law School. The purpose of this tutorial is to give you all of the information you need to seal your own Massachusetts quarry. You can do this on your own and we'll show you how. But if you want to talk to someone, our contact info is above. Give us a call and we can help. All our services are free. In this tutorial, we'll cover a few different topics. First, what is a quarry and why does it matter? Second, who's el eligible to seal and when? We'll talk about waiting periods and the difference between felony convictions and misdemeanor convictions. One very important thing to note, if you are not a citizen or legal permanent resident, you should not seal your quarry without first talking to an immigration attorney. Don't bother watching this video. You should talk to an immigration attorney first. Third, many people are confused about the difference between sealing and expungement. We'll describe the difference. Fourth, we'll walk you through what happens once your quarry is sealed. This includes information about what you can say when someone asks you if you have a record, who can no longer see your record once you've sealed it, and who can still see your record. Finally, we'll show you the paperwork you'll need to send the Office of Probation in order to seal your record. Don't worry, it's just one piece of paper. So that's all of the information we'll cover in this tutorial. We'll have separate videos you can watch to learn how to request a copy of your quarry, how to read your quarry, and what to do if you have sexual offenses on your record. Okay, so what is a quarry and why does it matter? Quarry stands for Criminal Offender Record Information. A quarry is a record of all of your criminal involvement, including convictions, non-convictions, and pending criminal charges under Massachusetts law. Note that Cory is only a record of Massachusetts charges. That means that charges for criminal offenses in other states or under federal law aren't on your Cory. You can't seal any charges from other states or charges under federal law by sealing your Massachusetts Cory. Your Cory also doesn't show any juvenile charges you might have. But the good news is that you can request to seal your juvenile record when, um, when you're making your request to seal your quarry. A quarry is also not the same as government fingerprint records. So if you seal your quarry, that doesn't seal your fingerprint records. Also, quarry is different than the Sex Offender Registry Information, or SORI. Sealing your quarry does not seal your SORI. So, Quarry records are open to the public, but there are tiers of access, meaning that some types of organizations can see more of your quarry and some can see less. Anyone can see misdemeanor convictions that are up to one year old and felony convictions that are up to two years old. Murder, manslaughter, and sex offense convictions are visible no matter how old they are. Most employers and landlords have slightly more access to your quarry. They can see older misdemeanor and felony charges, as well as pending cases. Healthcare providers, banks, and public housing get slightly more access than employers and landlords. They can see all misdemeanor and felony convictions. Until you get up to higher levels of access, most organizations can't see any non-convictions on your record, nor any juvenile cases, sealed cases, or non-incarcerable offenses. Schools, caregivers, 
military recruiters, and children's camps all have heightened access, meaning they can see non-convictions. But only law enforcement can see sealed cases. Law enforcement has the highest level of access to your quarry. So here's the bottom line. Many organizations, including landlords, employers, schools, and banks, have some access to your quarry. By sealing your quarry, you can protect your information so that these organizations no longer see your record. Now we're going to talk about when you're eligible to seal your quarry. For this part of the video, you may want to have your quarry on hand. If you don't have your quarry available, check out our video, How to Request Your Quarry. If you need some guidance on how to read your quarry, we have another video for that too. As it turns out, you can seal your quarry by mail or by appearing in court. We'll talk briefly about sealing in court later. For now, we'll focus on sealing by mail. To seal a quarry by mail, a waiting period after your most recent conviction in any state must have elapsed without any additional convictions or incarcerations. For convictions, the waiting period begins after you were found guilty or after any jail or prison time, whichever date is later. We'll give you an example in a second. For misdemeanors, the waiting period is three years. For felonies, it's longer, seven years. Sex offenses leading to classification as a level one sex offender can only be sealed after 15 years. There are also waiting periods for sealing non-convictions by mail. The waiting period for misdemeanor non-convictions is three years, and the waiting period for felony non-convictions is seven years. If you have a non-conviction with a waiting period that is less than the three-year misdemeanor waiting period, or the seven-year felony waiting period, you may still be able to seal this charge. To do so, please contact us at LSC. Some offenses just can't be sealed. Sex convictions leading to level two or three sex offender classifications can't be sealed, and neither can firearms convictions. Crimes against public justice, things like perjury, witness intimidation, or ethical offenses can't be sealed. And of course, open cases can't be sealed either. At the end of the video, we'll talk through several examples of how the waiting periods work. For now though, we'll continue on. Now that we've talked a bit about sealing eligibility, let's talk about expungement, expungement versus sealing. Sealing and expungement. What's the difference? Sealing your quarry is like putting your quarry behind a wall that most people can't see past. Expungement, on the other hand, is like erasing your quarry altogether. Because expungement effectively wipes your record clean, it's a lot harder to qualify for. Expungement may be available for charges before, um, available for charges before you reach the age of 21 or charges that are no longer crimes in the state of Massachusetts. There may be some ex other exceptions, but the bottom line is this. Expungement is only available in a very small number of cases. If you think you might have expungible car charges, contact us using the phone number provided the at the beginning of the video. So, what happens once you've sealed your quarry? We said that sealing your quarry is like hiding it. So, who can't see your quarry after you've sealed it? Well, almost everyone. Employers, landlords, hospitals, banks, public housing, schools, they can no longer see your quarry once you seal it. Before you seal your quarry, there's one really important thing to do. Keep a copy of your quarry. Once you seal your quarry, even you won't be able to see it. 
The only people who can still see your quarry after you seal it are members of law enforcement, including police officers, judges, and probation officers. After you seal your quarry, you no longer have to say you have a criminal record when asked. If your entire record has been sealed, you can say that you have no record when applying for such things as jobs or licenses. Okay, so now we're down to the nuts and the bolts. Say you're eligible to seal your, your quarry and you want to do it. What do you actually do? There are two options. You can either seal by mail or seal in court. We'll talk about both. If you're eligible, sealing by mail is the easiest way to seal your quarry. All you need to do is fill out a form called a petition to seal. That form is available at the link provided on the screen. You can also find it by searching Massachusetts request to seal criminal record on a search engine such as Google. That's Massachusetts request to seal criminal, criminal record. The petition to seal is available on the Massachusetts government website, mass.gov. We'll now walk you through the petition to seal form. The petition to seal form is a single sheet of paper. At the top, you'll see four boxes. You should check the boxes for which you are requesting to seal records. The first box is for juvenile records. The second box is for misdemeanor records. The third box is for felonies. And the fourth box is for offenses that are no longer crimes. We generally recommend that clients check all four boxes. This is what this part of the form looks like when complete. The middle of the petition to seal asks for some basic biographical information, your name, date of birth, mailing address, and social security number. Fill this out as best you can. Finally, if you checked the top three boxes at the top, you need to sign at the bottom of the petition. This bottom portion of the petition asks you to confirm that, to the best of your knowledge, you meet the requirements for sealing your quarry. Once you've read through the text and feel comfortable, you can check three boxes on the left and then sign. Note that you have to sign twice. This is what the final part of the form looks like when complete. Once you fill out the petition to seal, you're all set. Send the petition to seal into the Commissioner of Probation. The address is at the top of the petition to seal form and included on this slide. Then it'll likely be a few weeks before you hear back. One thing to note is that when you send the petition, you should not include a copy of your quarry because the probation office already has access to that. Keep a copy of your quarry for yourself because once it's sealed, you won't be able to see what used to be on it. If you hear back and your petition is denied, it could be that you were not eligible to seal by mail. Then might be a good time to call us so we can help you. Even though sealing by mail is the easier way to seal your quarry, sealing in court is the better option in some circumstances. If you have recent non-convictions, you can seal those in court before their waiting period has elapsed. You can't seal non-convictions by mail until all waiting periods for charges in the record have elapsed, so going to court may be the quickest option. That said, cases differ, so if you're considering petitioning to, petitioning to seal your record in court, call us first. We would love to help you.
In this tutorial, we've tried to walk you through the steps of sealing your quarry. If you want help, please call us or send us an email. We are more than happy to help. Thanks for staying with us through the tutorial. If you want to learn more about how the waiting periods for different types of convictions and non-convictions work, stay tuned for a bit longer and we'll walk through an example. In this last section, we're going to walk through an example of a fictional character's quarry. Figuring out your quarry will be the hardest part of this process. We're going to use a simplified example, understanding that many people's quarries will look more complicated. We're available by phone or email to help you understand your own quarry. Let's use a fictional character named Billy Bob as an example. Billy Bob has a few charges on his quarry, a felony conviction for which he was released on June 2013, a misdemeanor conviction for which he was released in July 2018, and a felony non-conviction with a disposition date in May 2019. In case you're wondering why I'm using these particular dates, the reason is that for convictions, the waiting period starts when you are found guilty or released from jail or prison, whichever is later. For non-convictions, the waiting period starts on the disposition date. Start by figuring out the waiting period for each charge. For the felony, there's a waiting period of seven years. Seven years from 2013 is 2020, so the waiting period would end June 15, 2020. For the misdemeanor, the waiting period is three years. Three years from 2018 is 2021. So the waiting period ends in July 2021. For the non-conviction, there is no waiting period for sealing in court, but, there, but the same period as for, con as for uh, felony convictions applies if sealing by mail. So if Billy Bob wants to go to court to seal his non-conviction, he can do that at any time. If he wants to seal the non-conviction by mail, he has to wait for its waiting period to end. Since it's for a felony, the waiting period is seven years. Seven years from 2019 is 2026. Here's the good thing though. Billy Bob can still seal the convic convictions on his record, even if the non-conviction waiting period hasn't finished yet. So in order to seal, Billy Bob has to wait until the last waiting period for a conviction has elapsed. In this case, that means waiting for the misdemeanor waiting period to elapse, July 1st, 2021. After July 1st, 2021, Billy Bob is eligible to seal his quarry. If Billy Bob seals after July 2021, he'll be able to seal his misdemeanor and felony convictions. The non-conviction won't be sealed yet because its waiting period is still running. Billy Bob could go to court to get it sealed early or wait for the waiting period to finish and then send in another petition to seal by mail. If we confused you with the example, don't worry. It's a bit complicated. Still, the most important thing to remember is that misdemeanor convictions can be sealed after three years and felony convictions can be sealed after seven years. That brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching and please, Contact us with any questions you have. We offer free legal services and it's our job to help.